Not so long ago, we've discussed one of the recent simulations released by scientists working for NASA. And in that simulation that you can find in the description below, we essentially got to observe what it might look like as we approach and fall into a supermassive black hole like the one in the center of the Milky Way. And though by itself the simulation was quite impressive, as I mentioned in that video in the description, it did actually lack a few things that we kind of expect from certain types of black holes. Moreover, extremely recently, or basically like yesterday from when I'm making this video, a different team working with the James Webb Space Telescope has officially discovered the farthest ever colliding black holes ever seen. Two supermassive black holes in galaxies that existed 13 billion years ago that represent the earliest black hole collisions we've ever seen. Here these two giants are approximately 50 million solar masses each and they're actually visible to us because of everything we know about black holes, specifically from all of the very fast motion around black holes especially in the accretion disk that we've seen so many times. And so by knowing exactly what's going on in the accretion disk, the researchers can usually establish exactly what they're looking at and even find out exact properties of certain black holes. Which is exactly what was done here, making this by itself a relatively exciting discovery. This is in a system known as ZS7. And the reason I wanted to start with these examples is just to highlight how much we've learned about black holes in the last few decades and really mostly based on observations from the regions around them and specifically from various emissions from regions like the accretion disk or from various powerful jets. For example, jets like this. This is a relatively realistic simulation of the famous black hole M87, also known as Poehi, the one whose image was released a few years back. But in a lot of these observations, sometimes there is maybe a bit of a mystery. Actually, even right here, some of these black holes potentially spin a little bit too fast based on observations of various X-rays, along with a few other additional observations that were sometimes difficult to explain. And the thing is, when it comes to observing these black holes, and specifically analyzing their accretion disks, it's usually all about X-ray emissions. It's actually using a very cool technique known as X-ray mapping, or sometimes also referred to as echo mapping. Because here, by observing how various X-rays, such as for example from the corona of the black hole, reflect from the accretion disk, in essence it becomes possible to kind of scan the entire region around a typical black hole. Something has been done many times in the past, revealing an overall structure of a typical active black hole. And since most active black holes will produce these X-rays because of what's known as an X-ray corona, they will usually produce these reflections, which can then be detected by modern X-ray telescopes, basically revealing a three-dimensional image of your typical black hole and its accretion disk. But it's always been believed that this only allows us to see most of the black hole region except for some of the closest parts, specifically parts extremely close to the event horizon. Because according to Einsteinian's predictions, very close to the event horizon there is actually a region known as innermost stable circular orbit, ISCO. And it's essentially a region that once you cross, you are basically required to kind of fall into the black hole. No stable orbits exist inside of it. And this is not exactly the same as the event horizon and actually lies about 1.5 times as far away from the center of the black hole as the event horizon. Here's a very rough schematic showing us what all of this might kind of look like. And so once any mass reaches this part, it essentially plunges into a black hole. Which is why sometimes it's also referred to as the plunging region. Here the material starts to accelerate extremely fast and eventually even reaches the speed of light. Or I guess as close to the speed of light as possible. But for many many years it's always been believed that we generally do not see anything from this region, mostly once again because nothing really can escape it and nothing can have any kind of a stable orbit eventually plunging into the black hole. Nevertheless, this was always a very important prediction of the general relativity and it was also a very important part of understanding black holes. It just we didn't really have any evidence to see if it's real or not. Until now. And well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries about this unusual region, confirmation of its existence, and most importantly that it's maybe a little bit different from what scientists thought before. With all of these discoveries coming out of a very famous black hole not so far away from us, known as Maxi J1820. And unlike previous two black holes I've discussed that are basically the farthest away, 
this here is one of the closest black holes known to us. And I guess first, let's discuss exactly what this system is. Just like so many other binary systems, this is essentially what's known as an X-ray binary, also sometimes referred to as a microquasar, a black hole that's about 8 solar masses that orbits a star that's just a little bit smaller than the Sun. But because their orbits are so close, basically steals a lot of matter from the star, which then starts to circulate around it, forming the accretion disk and forming the jets. And in the last few years, a lot of very powerful emissions, mostly from these jets, have been detected by various telescopes like Chandra, making this black hole one of the most studied in the last decade, even though it's at a distance of about 10,000 light years away from planet Earth. And naturally, because so many X-rays are coming from here, researchers have also been able to basically sort of scan the vicinity of this black hole, discovering what's happening around it, or basically making a lot of additional predictions. Interestingly, one of the more unusual observations from this black hole is the overall velocity of the jets coming toward us. In this image, you actually see two jets. One of them is headed away from us at approximately 60% the speed of light, and one is headed toward us at approximately 160% of the speed of light. And so yeah, here the jets appear to be moving faster than light. But as you might learn in one of the videos in the description, this is known as superluminal motion. And it's actually a kind of a visual illusion because of the orientation of these jets toward us and because of how light from these jets appears to arrive to planet Earth from such far away distances. And so the actual speed here is about 80% the speed of light. But yeah, this unusual phenomenon of superluminal motion is super fascinating. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But going back to those predictions. And so here Einsteinian theories predict this plunging region, something that should exist 1.5 radii, Schwarzschild radii, away from the center. But this region has never really been seen before and has never been proven to exist either. All the previous studies from just a few years ago have actually proposed that we can maybe detect this by observing certain reverberations or vibrations of echoes from various accretion disks, although nothing like that has been detected so far. But then this new study came out very, very recently and actually discovered something extremely unusual. Here they essentially proposed an observational model that suggests even these super close regions, very close to the event horizon, should actually still produce additional X-ray light emitted by matter as it falls into the black hole at these ridiculous velocities. And though no light was expected before, this study disagrees proposing certain types of X-rays that should be detectable with modern telescopes. And so here they basically propose the model that predicts the existence of this plunging region through extremely specific X-ray emissions. And once they established the model, they decided to test this on this particular black hole where we do have a lot of data. And turns out that their model seems to match exactly what we observe. And so here, by comparing actual emissions with their model, they definitively showed that the X-ray spectrum from Maxi J1820 fits very well with the model including that plunging region, but not with previous models that ignored it. Or just to rephrase this, here they achieved two things. First, they proved the existence of the plunging region as predicted by Einsteinian theories, or basically that region close to the black hole where nothing can orbit anymore and basically plunges into the black hole with speeds approaching the speed of light. But second of all, they were able to show that even inside this region, there are very specific X-ray emissions that are produced and can be detected. And this extra light actually solves previous mysteries about black holes that were maybe spinning a little bit too fast. Because before it was difficult to explain why certain black holes are emitting certain types of X-rays. Yet here, this hypothesis kind of explains everything all at once. So some of these black holes are not spinning as fast as we thought, and they're actually just emitting extra X-rays from that region extremely close to the event horizon. And so by itself, this new proposition, and I guess new proof, is, for black hole scientists, kind of incredible. Even after decades and decades of studying these giants, we still find new stuff we never knew about them, even though technically Einstein predicted all of this a long time ago. Although here his predictions obviously did not talk about actual emissions. And so this new study definitely provides us with some extra stuff. And well, yeah, another addition to black holes. Now we know that they have plunging region as well, and we know that stuff inside this region seems to emit certain radiation. But obviously to confirm all of this, similar observations would now have to be done with other black holes in order to confirm how accurate this is and if this actually applies to every black hole we know, 
meaning that we might have to recalculate certain things. But most importantly, it looks like we're still learning about black holes even today, and I guess it's a little bit unfortunate that NASA decided to shut down Chandra Observatory, one of the most prolific X-ray observatories known to us. This was actually a recent financial decision, and as far as I know, it's going to be really hard to replace this observatory because it was extremely prolific at detecting so much stuff about everything in X-rays. As a matter of fact, this was also from Chandra as well. But in terms of black hole research, we still have so much more to discover about them, which means that we're going to come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.